Hi, I'm Homer and I'm with Southwest Mailing Systems here in Las Vegas, Nevada. I wanted to take a few minutes today to talk to you about why you should have a postage meter. A lot of people say, why should I have a postage meter? It just costs a lot of money and I might as well go get stamps. It'll be cheaper that way. Not necessarily. Most people spend less on their postage meter in a month than they spend on their Starbucks coffee in a week. You see, a postage meter is almost like having a printer in your office. Can you imagine running a business today and not having a computer or a printer? Wouldn't be very easy. Well, a postage meter makes your life a lot simpler. A lot of people aren't aware of the benefits of having a postage meter. First of all, I went on the website today to pull up the notice one, two, three. That is the notice the post office puts out with all the correct rates. By the way, in case you aren't aware, the post office just changed the rates back in January, and that's the new notice one, two, three that's 75 pages long. See, having a postage meter is kind of like having a postal clerk sitting right in your office. Every postage meter that I'm aware of has a scale on it that includes all of the information in those 75 pages. So whether I'm shipping a letter across town that's just a single page in an envelope, or whether I'm sending a package to Albuquerque, it tells me what the rates are going to be. And that's a huge advantage. You see, another thing people don't realize is the postage meter actually gives me a discount. The post office back in the early 2000s did a study, and they said that a person that uses a postage meter saves between 10 to 20 percent. And that's because, again, that machine calculates the rates for me, and I don't end up doing what most people do. A person usually throws a couple of pages into an envelope and says, oh, I think that's a one ounce. They, put a, they throw a single 55 cent stamp on. They say, oh, I think it might be a little bit heavy. I don't want it to come back. So they, say, so they throw two stamps on. And now they're paying $1.10 for that piece. If they use the postage meter, the postage meter has a scale, so you could put it on there and make sure of the correct rate. And if it is a two ounce letter, I'm only going to pay 71 cents as opposed to a dollar 10. That's a 39 cent savings. Wow, what is that? that, that that's almost 40% savings on that piece of mail. So if you find yourself throwing a lot of two stamps on, uh, on mail, you might be wasting a lot of money. The other thing is, is a couple years ago, the post office changed from the standard weigh it and ship it to a uh, we, we call it shape-based rating. So the post office now rates all mail based upon the, 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 the weight, the length, the height, the thickness. And that shape-based rating is all in the scales as well. So you can determine the correct rate dependent upon your mail piece. So again, that's a savings there to you. You don't have, really have to worry about having 55 cent stamps and 10 cent stamps and one cent stamps to make sure you put the correct postage on because the postage meter can be set to the exact rate that, that piece of mail goes out. Whether it's 51 cents or whether it's $1.39, the, the meter can rate the correct amount no matter what. Uh, another advantage is, is that um, it gives you a more professional image. If you think about it, which looks better? A little red stamp up in the corner or five stamps across the face of the envelope? The other thing is, it helps you look as professional and as large as your largest competitor. I would say that in most industries, your largest competitor is using a postage meter. Why? Because large companies use postage meters. And you can use a postage meter too, even if you're operating out of your garage. Matter of fact, here in Las Vegas, I've had more than one customer who is a home-based business, and they found it very, very helpful to have that postage meter. Because here again, it rates the mail. Here's another thing that's a huge savings that people often forget about. You see, if I put stamps on a, on a, on a piece of mail, and it's over 11 ounces, I am supposed to take and hand it directly to a, mail, to a mail person, to a postal employee. If I use a postage meter, it doesn't matter if it's one ounce or 32 pounds. I can drop it in a mailbox. So that's a savings there for you as well. If I'm using a postage meter, I never have to stand in line to get my Mahisa mail of accepted. I can just drop it in the box. Great savings there. Another thing is the accountability. I, the, I believe that a lot of people who use stamps and think they're saving money with stamps are losing a lot of money through what I call unintended pilfering. What I mean by that is Sally comes into the office. She has a letter to mail. She forgot her stamp at home. The mail's got to go out today. So what does she do? She says, I'll just borrow a stamp from the office and I'll bring it back tomorrow. She gets it, comes in tomorrow and says, dadgummit, I forgot my stamp. Well, that happens for a couple of days and she simply forgets that she borrowed a stamp. She never meant to take that stamp from the office. She meant to borrow it for a day, but she forgot. That happens a lot. 
And then there's always, it's, you know, and, and what we find is that when you have a postage meter, there's either a mechanism available where people pay immediately for using the postage meter, or they do not use the postage meter at all. And it's usually pretty secure. It's also very, very easy to use. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move, switch over to our website. I'm going to go through the four different types of postage meters that are available. Let's talk a little bit about the mailing equipment. We're going to use the Southwest Mailing Systems website to explore the different types of equipment that are available. And specifically, we'll be talking about the FP Mailing Solutions postage meters. There are essentially four types of meters in the marketplace. There are what we call a punch card or time clock machines, manual. There is a semi-automatic machine. There is an automatic machine. And then there's the dynamic scale systems that is an automatic with a dynamic scale in the middle of the machine. Let's talk about a little, a little bit about each one of them. First of all, the punch card or time clock style of machine. The way this machine works is I take a piece of mail, I slide it in, let it stamp it, and pull it back out. If I need to weigh it, right here's a scale, so I can put the piece of mail on top of the scale first, choose my class of mail, and get the correct rates before I stamp it. Very simple, basic machine. If I go on to the semi-automatic machines, if you'll notice there's multiple semi-automatic machines, I'm just going to use this one here, the post base Vision, to talk about it. The semi-automatic, I give the machine a piece, it takes it through the machine, and puts it out. Again, it's got a scale that will rate the piece so that I get the correct rate on the piece as it goes through the machine. Now many of these do have sealers, but we really don't recommend them. If you really want a machine that seals, we highly recommend you step up to the fully automatic machine. Again, you'll see there's multiple automatic machines. We'll just take the one in the middle, the post base Vision Advanced, and talk a little bit about it. These all come in different speeds. There's uh, you know a, a variety of different speeds on, on these automatic machines. Which one you need really comes down to how you run your mail, uh, how much mail you do, uh, and, and, and even the type of mail that, that, that you're running can have an impact on the type of automatic feeder that you want to use. These all have scales on them. They come with a counting system so you can keep track of who's spending the postage. And you can do all types of analytics and reporting to, to figure out uh, what, uh, uh, you know, how your money is being spent. On an automatic machine, I can take my mail and put it in over here, put a stack in here. I can turn my sealer on or off. So if I turn my sealer on, it'll actually open the flap, lick the flap, and seal it as it goes through the machine. So I put my letters here, it seals it, stamps it, and stacks it, all in one simple process. Now if I go up to the fourth kind of machine, the automatic with a dynamic scale on the middle of it, these are really pretty fantastic machines. As you may be aware, the post office today requires that you rate your mail based upon its weight and shape. And we used to have a term, or there is still a term called shape-based weighing. And that's what these machines do. They, as the piece of mail flows through the machine, it can measure the weight, the height, the thickness, and the length of the mail piece to make sure that it's being rated correctly as it flows through the machine. Now these machines still have an external scale. In case you want to rate a package or something like that, you can actually rate the package as it goes through. Then these machines all have some kind of a mechanism to print a tape. So if it's a box, obviously I'm not going to put a box through the machine, I can print out a tape to stick on the box. Again, four basic types of machines. There's the time clock machine. Actually, let's take to step back. Step back here. There is the the time clock or punch card system. There's the semi-automatic machine. There is the automatic machine, and there's the dynamic scale. Dynamic scale you might also hear as in motion or way on the way. Basically, dynamic scale, in motion, way on the way. They're all the same. Don't let yourself get fooled by thinking a semi-automatic machine is an automatic. They are vastly different machines. The, the automatic is a much, much more efficient machine than the semi-automatic. Which one do you need, though, is highly dependent upon the type of mail that you're processing. So we talked about the four different types of mailing machines. You might say, well, which machine do I need? Well, it really depends on your specific situation. How much mail are you doing? When are you doing it? How often are you doing it? What type of mail are you doing? Those are all factors that will determine which machine that you need. If you're just doing... 75 to $100 a month, you probably need one of the small machines. If you're doing several thousand dollars a month and you do a lot of variable weight mail, then you probably need one of the big machines.
One of those with the dynamic scale that dynamically weighs every piece as it goes through the mail, mail machine. I may have created more questions than I've answered here today, and I apologize if I've done that. But I'd be glad to talk to you personally and answer any questions you might have, whether you're here in Las Vegas and I can serve you directly, or if you're in uh, Altoona, Pennsylvania, and I can't do anything for you but refer you to somebody else. Feel free to contact me. You can either give me a call. I'll put my number here on the screen as well as my email address. So you can email me at homer at southwestmailing.com. You can come to our website, southwestmailing.com. I'd be glad to talk to you, be glad to address any questions that you have and, and, and hopefully answer those things so you can make the right decision about what is the right postage meter for your company.